nation place. And we have we have around twenty to thirty minutes um, to have a conversation. And um, I'm just going to introduce myself very quickly as Frank Bock, uh, freelance artist curator. And um, yeah, maybe uh, Sally and um, Marie, you can introduce yourselves next. Mm. I'm Sally Doughty and I'm a principal lecturer in dance at De Montfort University and I work as, a, as an independent dance artist as well. I'm Marie Fitzpatrick, I'm a senior lecturer in dance. Again, I'm here at De Montfort University, hence why we're sitting together, <laughs> and um, also consider myself as a, as a dance artist. Um, um, hi, I'm Jane Greenfield, um, I'm a freelance uh, curator and programmer, I'm also co-director of Home Live Art, a uh, London-based arts organisation, and um, I was the artistic director of Dance 4 uh, and Not Dance from 1994 to 2004. <laughs> and can I just say welcome to everybody from Dance 4. Um, this is a very special conversation place, number five, um, as part of the Not Dance 2015 festival. And I'll hand back to Frank Bott now. Thank you, Sarah. So um, this conversation, uh, I think, is kind of initiated by some research that um, uh, you, Marie, and Sally have, have been working on. So perhaps um, be useful to outline uh, for us what what that research is, and, and perhaps broadly what it covers, and, and we can take the conversation from there. Yeah, sure. Mm. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, this research project, I'm just going to refer to this uh, piece of paper here. Um, the project is called Mapping the Landscape, the Identity of Hybrid Dance Artist Academics Working Across Academia and the Professional Arts Sector. It's quite a long title and it's changed as the project has um, gone on. And it's a project that Marie and I started I think probably about two years ago now. Um, uh, we were having um, some conversations around how as artists, we are working in the academy, in, in higher education, and still endeavouring to maintain ourselves as independent dance artists in the professional arts sector. And we were talking about some of the tensions that have arisen for us between trying to um, work across both those contexts. And uh, in talking to, to, to colleagues and friends, it transpired that they also have quite a similar experience to us. And so we thought, well, obviously something is going on here. Um, it needs to be perhaps unearthed and dug into it a little bit to actually see how artists are able to work effectively across both higher education and the professional arts context. And um, in our research, what we notice is that practice as research, as it's couched in academia, is documented a lot. But actually, <clears throat> what was missing for us was the mapping of personal experiences of people like ourselves, really, who are working within academia but also within the professional arts sector. So for us, this project really is a mapping exercise and the, the experiences of the people who work in, in, in that way. Um, and just very quickly, just, mm -hmm. to, just to say we've done, we're mid-process in our research mm -hmm. um, and so far what we've done is we've gone out and we've done, we've done round table discussions. Um, the first one was in uh, Arnhem at the Artes Institute at uh, the Inventing Future Symposium. The second one was in Leeds uh, at the Questioning the Contemporary in the 21st Century British Dance Practice Symposium at Leeds Met University. And thirdly, uh, at Independent Dance in London um, at the Artists in Academia, Conflicts and Contributions um, Day. So we've gathered a lot of um, um, data, really, from participants at those roundtable mm -hmm. events. Mm -hmm. Great. And I, and I think um, there's something about, for me, that, that stands out immediately is something about the interdependency between the art form and learning institutions. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. So perhaps, Jane, you, there's, there's something you can share around that. Um, yeah, I'm, um, I mean, um, as I said, uh, as I said before, when we, when we were chatting just before we came on air, uh, you know, my I suppose my contribution to this and my experience is, is very much as a as a programmer, um, um, 
and a sort of particular um, you know sort of festival venue programmer um, rather than somebody who's actually worked in academia. Um, and I suppose uh, my kind of opening thoughts were that that, I, uh, that certainly in my experience and in the past those those tensions and in tensions between the kind of uh, uh, sort of professional the professional uh, um, area and ac academic area ha there have been those tensions there um, and they've not always been easy and there's been a definite sort of separateness and almost a kind of clash a clash of interests maybe or um, a clash of direction um, and a perception around status around those people working in academia and those people working outside of academia and certainly historically that's been my experience um, but what I would say is that over the um, there's been a shift for me again sort of observing observing from a distance um, there's been a shift there which there has been much more interchange between um, the practicing the professional artists and and artists and academics working within institutions and and that it is becoming more fluid um, and that more artists are migrating towards academia for a whole range of reasons um, um, and I think as I said before you know some of those reasons are financial reasons economic reasons but I think some of them are also to do with um, the the academic uh, context or institution kind of supporting mm. being a supportive and creative um, environment mm. uh, um, in a way that perhaps it, uh, historically it was less so maybe mm. um, so certainly those are the kind of observations that that I've been making um, yeah so I put that out there yeah yeah I think that, oh, sorry Frank go on. Well, what comes to mind for me, in a way, is is, is this idea of, of um, perhaps for a freelance artist, the idea of the academy is as a refuge um, is yeah, it, it's quite important or it implies a certain kind of stability. But I was also curious about about um, artists that move in and out. That it's not just you know may spend some time or going in and then coming out of the academy do you, is it yeah you know, well, how much did your research look at artists who 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 don't just yeah who move between these, these mm. two mm. well i think that probably you and i consider ourselves to 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 kind of uh, reflect that activity whereby we are you know we are research active within the academy um, we are we are involved in that uh, in that kind of research uh, trajectory, if you like. But within that, we're still very much seeking mm. to position ourselves and our work as as artists beyond the academy. You know, so so Marie's mm. um, Marie has work uh, in the Not Dance Festival next week. You know, so we are um, kind of placing ourselves outside of that context. Um, and I think. Um, which is, which is perhaps what kind of initiated the project is mm. that whilst we might be deemed to be quite successful in terms of our kind of practice as research within the academy, it's it can prove really difficult to to bridge that gap, to to begin to shift our work into perhaps um, more more professional festival type contexts, and I think that that's partly mm. what what underpinned the project. I think um, the kind of focus of that has shifted for us now, but. Mm. I definitely consider myself to be mm. kind of grappling with that tension across both worlds. I think. I think. I think that that word tension. I think there are. I think there are synergies, but I definitely think there are tensions mm. too. And either Jane or Frank, you said a conflict um, of those two worlds, perhaps. And in terms of our roundtable discussions, that mm. that seemed to be a common experience. Mm. This idea of these two institutional frameworks of the professional arts sector and then the academy. And if you choose to navigate both those structures, mm -hmm. how do you do that? Mm. And where do the conflicts come? Where mm. are the tensions? Where are the opportunities? And for us, what what started to be really interesting is how people started to reflect on the inventive entrepreneurial mm. ways of how they how they did that, mm. and also how they described navigating mm. uh, those two worlds. Um, mm. 
because they feel like two quite different worlds. Um, uh, other, other discussions that we've held, um, participants talked about the kind of vertical hierarchy of the academy as opposed to the horizontal, more um, kind of community-focused uh, framework of, of the community of working professionally. So it feels like they're tra kind of trying to fit a, a, a square peg in a round hole, perhaps. <laughs> yeah. But you had a question, Frank, about... <clears throat> Uh, about the whether the academy is now a refuge, mm. or I is that the case, or is that how it's seen? Is that? I guess that perception of, of that somehow uh, maybe it's not the case anymore, but somehow, um, you know, there's more of a job for life, or yes, yeah. more more stability, perhaps. Maybe mm. that's maybe that's shifting. Mm. I think that. Um, Whilst it might have well felt like a job for life at at one point, maybe not so long ago, I think with you know uh, funding cuts, you know cuts to education, I think that feels less secure now. Um, although I can appreciate why perhaps artists are migrating into the academy because that might still offer them more security through you know regular income, access to resources, support for their practice in a way that perhaps doesn't support. Um, uh, they don't have working outside of, you know, outside of HE perhaps. So I think it can offer some, um, many benefits, of course. Um, but, but you know, we we spoke about tensions earlier on. So I think I think they still very much exist for those artists who are trying to work across both spaces. Mm. And what and and I was. What kind of work, what does it do for work and what kind of work is produced? What, what, what does the academy allow in terms of the kind of work that's produced? Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. Um, <coughs> I'm not sure I can answer that question. I think it's a really, really useful question that would <clears throat> be really interesting to hear Jane reflect on that in terms of the artists, the range of artists you work with. But from from my perspective and in terms of the research we've been doing, what we've been hearing is that you, um, participants of the roundtable discussions perhaps make work in different ways for different contexts mm. because you play, play the game in effect. Um, but it's a question for us if you're not playing the game but you're making work mm. because you're just making work, is that shaped by the institution you're making work within mm. because of the parameters, because of the funding, because of um, the audiences mm. that will and be receiving that one. And I guess I, I suppose part of the question there as well, I don't know, might be um, for, for, for people such as yourself working within academia is, are you, um, is why you're making the work. I mean, are you making the work because, it, are you making the work because you want to get it out there? Uh, you know, uh, in within the public realm, um, in in, a, in that kind of traditional sense, I get it out in front of audiences, tour it, get it seen, it has a visibility, um, or uh, which which is valid. Um, but are you, or and or are you making work because it's part of your um, ongoing practice, inquiry, research, um, mm. which, and I suppose again that's that historically for me has been one of the, the tensions or questions which is you know is is the work that you're making um, designed to be made public or is it designed to um, does it remain in the studio does it remain in the in the workspace mm -hmm. and again there's a very valid reason if you know for it doing that too um, and it, it's about and I think so there's there's a kind of question there about about what you're making work for, um, and but you know both for your own investigation and both for the public realm are, are both valid, and, mm -hmm. I, and I think, and again going back historically, I sort of I, I think um, for programmers in the past less so now, because I think programmers have also become more sort of sophisticated in a sense and, and much broader in their thinking around. What a what a festival program or a venue program might have, that it you know that it can include finished work, it can include research and development, it can include inquiry and mm -hmm. and, and and so on. Perhaps in the past less so that programmers might have looked at work being made by 
dance academics and kind of ask some fairly fundamental questions which are along the you know fairly unflattering questions along the lines of you know is it good enough mm -hmm. <laughs> horrible question but, yeah, but yeah. Um, is it going to stand up mm -hmm. um, is it going to stand up uh, in the program alongside the other the other work yeah. um, is it going to, you know um, is it going to be of a similar kind of quality mm -hmm. you know um, is it going to have the same production values? Mm -hmm. you know, is it is it going to be of interest to my audience? Yeah. You know, um, um, but I think I think for a whole range of reasons that's that's changing. As I say, partly because programmers are have for some time now kind of taken a much kind of broader view of what a program of work could be and could look like. Mm -hmm. It can include inquiry, it can include research, it can include different influences. It's not just about presenting finished pieces of work by a touring artist. Mm. And Jane, do, do you think that's maybe come about because there are more artists who are working in HE, engaging in research, try, trying to get that work out into the, into the sector? And so I think, that's, I think, I think that's, there's definitely that there. I think that is an influence. I mm. also think it's partly to do with the nature of um, and the sort of the kind of shift in aesthetics as well over the last sort of several years around this whole notion of kind of um, dance um, dance sort of the, the, the thinking dance the academic dance the the, the um, you know that some some of those kind of strands of work that have kind of come through Europe um, and also, you know, through choreographers such as Jonathan Burroughs, where, where although it's not come, it's not rooted in academia. This, you know, this kind of slightly kind of strange, clunky title of sort of thinking dance mm -hmm. somehow brings with it a sense of kind of intellectual inquiry, yeah. or um, um, and because and because of that, um, I think that has kind of helped. Mm. Maybe helped broker or maybe helped that relationship between kind of the the kind of the academics and 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 the dancers and and everything in and everything in between. Mm. Um, I don't think it's just that I don't think it's just that dancers are unlocking um, yeah. academia because they're working in there. I think it's more of the development of the form. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I, would, I would agree. I mean, I think there, there's been this this conceptual turn in the art yeah. form. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Where, where, where choreography has partly also been liberated from dance. Yeah. The choreographic has been talked about and in, in many through many disciplines and and um, and and somehow yeah dance is, is has become quite an expanded art form and, and mm. perhaps much more discursive and um, those yeah we've I think we mentioned earlier the. the Relationship between philosophy and um, the art form somehow sits very well in the in the academy, and uh, uh, whereas perhaps in mainland Europe, uh, artists work or have been working much more explicitly uh, from those sources. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I suppose what's interesting, and I, I could be very wrong here, but. My observation is that you know there is much more of a kind of migration of of dance artists, uh, uh, professional practitioners moving into academia, um, and having that kind of combined multifaceted yeah. career. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't. But the migration isn't. I'm not seeing the migration coming the other way mm -hmm. as much. Mm -hmm. So I don't know whether that means that that's because the problems are the same. In terms of, or well, the issues or the the barriers uh, are the same, or whether, in fact, there's something else going on, which is actually those sort of pr dance practitioners working within academia are <laughs> happier to stay there. I don't I don't know, <laughs> yeah. um, or whether it's still difficult to make work and get it out there and get yeah. it accepted by programmers. I don't know. What, I mean, I mean kind of work I know about you guys, how you guys sort of see that. And I suppose yeah. it brings us back to that question we had earlier about what is deemed as research mm. and, and the drive within academia for postgrad qualifications and PhD, which sets up research in a very particular way. 
And so there's a question about what kind of research are you engaged in in the academy that perhaps sits very well within the academy? Does it translate? I mean, it's a question. I know people argue that it translates very well. But I suppose I'm riding on the back of your comment, Jane, that, that, that I have noticed it's not a two-way mm. thing. There's a migration of dance artists moving into the mm. academy, but I haven't seen it necessarily the other way. Mm. So why is that? Is it is it the, because of the type of the research people are engaged in? Does it does it is it unable mm. to? Yeah. Because if there is this conceptual turn, then surely that should sit very well. Yeah, yeah. But then I think that there's. Maybe maybe we are assuming that every dance artist who who moves in, into the academy is engaged in research, mm -hmm. and yeah. I, and I don't think that's necessarily the case. Um, uh, you know, um, visiting lecturers, part time lecturers, perhaps who who don't have that kind of um, more secure relationship with the academy, perhaps mm -hmm. who 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 are kind of um, uh, working across both contexts. Yeah. Um, there, there, seems, yeah, well, there seems to be a number of different uh, different relationships of artists in the academy. Whether you're whether you're embedded there as a, a lecturer or course leader, mm -hmm. or whether you you choose to go there for mm -hmm. two or four mm -hmm. years in your practice through some kind of a program, or you come in as a visiting a visiting lecturer. I think that there are there are a number of different different ways mm -hmm. in which um, artists, I guess, come in. Mm -hmm. And whether your practice is just your practice as opposed to research. Yeah. So we're yeah. back to terminology yeah. again and status and identity, which mm -hmm. has come up a lot for us mm -hmm. at these roundtable mm -hmm. discussions. It's mm -hmm. how do you describe the thing that you do, and is is it describable mm -hmm. <laughs> or mm -hmm. categorised? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I think also. I mean, I'm aware we have to finish very soon, but I'm. But I think the other thing is, you know, what is what's the ambition for people such as yourself as well, working in academia? Um, what's the ambition for you in terms of your work and and it having a, a um, kind of public uh, mm. profile? And is that and um, um, and is that ambition the same? And and maybe this is where we need to start thinking differently, given the the difficulties, the tensions, and also just the. The general difficulty for all art, arts practitioners now, whether you're working as a freelancer or working in academia, mm. is we have to sort of think differently about our ambition and what, and what our work's going to do and where it's going to be seen or how it's seen or viewed or what it is. And it's not necessarily all about public presentation. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Mm. Um, and maybe it's the start of a much bigger conversation that, that perhaps mm -hmm. we don't have time for now but there is there is something um, evolving within the academy about impact yes um, and and therefore how do we measure the impact of our of our work you know it's kind of easier with a book because it's sold you know 6,000 copies or whatever but actually how do you then begin to measure the impact of your practice yes um, and I can see that Sarah's, Sarah's <laughs> back with us so it might be that but, but that's I mean, I think that's a great place to end, and maybe that is the follow-up question to the next conversation that we all have. So I really want to thank you for your contributions, Frank, Jane, Marie, and Sally. Thank you for your time. Uh, Marie, we're certainly looking forward to seeing you later in Not Dance Festival. So thank you for joining us today, and uh, we hope that this will be continued. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.